This week's video is brought to you by my upcoming manga, Amaranth Angels. In a future where humanity is expanding into space, Sai Nishizawa is a starfighter pilot prodigy, flying alongside her big sister and their close friend. However, following a sudden tragedy, Sai only wants to run as far from a cockpit as she can. Fate, however, has other ideas. You can start reading the prologue, which details the events that lead up to Sai's decision, on Webtoons now, and you can subscribe to my Patreon to read ahead. If you enjoy Girls on Panzer, and the military moe genre in general, you'll love this as well. Now, on to the video. Let's talk a bit about action scenes for a minute. The thing in an action scene that immediately grabs us is, usually, and understandably, the visuals of the action itself, the spectacle. This is obviously a key component of good action in a visual medium. And there are plenty of action scenes that lean heavily into this and entertain us purely through spectacle alone. But great action scenes do more than that. Great action scenes also further the story and give us insight into characters through the frame of the action going on. So instead of just a spectacle that's fun to look at, but otherwise empty, it enables a show or a movie to give us info during exciting moments, rather than needing to slow or stop the story later to do so. Girls and Panzer's action scenes are a masterclass in both their entertainment value, their storytelling, and also their portrayal of tank battles. I'll do a full video talking about how Girls and Panzer manages to perfectly balance realism and entertainment value in its battle scenes at some point. For now though, we'll be focusing on a single battle. Since this is my first battle analysis video, and I want to talk about both the storytelling elements of the battle, and analyze the battle from a more tactical and technical approach, I'm going to split this into two videos. You guys seem to like the shorter videos, and videos this length are about the limit of what I can make on a weekly basis. If you prefer, I sometimes skip a week, and do a longer videos occasionally, let me know though. All of that said, let's take a closer look at the first actual battle in Girls and Panzer. Ori vs. St. Gloriana. This battle is complete by the end of episode 4, so I doubt there will be any spoilers beyond that point, but here's a warning just in case. From a story perspective, this relatively short battle is doing a lot of important things, apart from it just being a fun battle. In addition to it being our proper introduction to Senshiro as a sport, it tells us a lot about where our characters stand at this point. <laughs> While Girls from Panzer is a sports anime, and so we expect to see Ori win eventually, they need to be established as the underdogs, both because this is more engaging generally, and because the story at this point requires it, considering what's already been set up. Contrasting Ori and its members with those of St. Gloriana was a deliberate choice, and St. Gloriana is probably the best team to use for this purpose. The contrast starts with simple visuals. Ori's eclectically colored tanks, with no uniformity, and the less than organized way they move as a team, compared with St. Gloriana's uniformity, and the extremely precise maneuvers they make as a unit. Using another school, like Saunders or Pravda at this point, would have provided a lesser contrast. Darjeeling's very calm, relaxed, confident, and almost borderline smug demeanor here is also an obvious contrast to not just Miho, but Ori's team as a whole. And accordingly, in the first team engagement up on the plateau, it's about as one-sided as it gets, with Ori's team sent into a barely organized retreat. A professional, experienced, and practiced unit versus an untrained, barely formed team. Ori has a lot of work to do if they'll have a hope to compete. This battle serves as a wake-up call to them, and tells us that Ori has a long, tough road ahead. All from just a very quick, short engagement to start the battle. <laughs> this battle takes place at a very early point in the show, and so we've spent the significant majority of our time so far with Miho and Anglerfish team. So this battle is used as an opportunity to give us some small moments with members of other teams to show us a bit of their personalities and to set them up as where they stand now so we can see their changes later on. Rabbit Team is an obvious one here, as they're really not taking things as seriously as they should, and then, when the battle gets more intense, they just panic and bail. Fittingly, as the freshmen, they are the greenest and least effective team in this fight, which just makes their eventual growth all the better. Next, we have Hippo Team. They know a bit more about tanks and use some of that to their advantage, but they haven't thought things through enough yet, and overconfidence bites them as they play themselves thanks to their elaborately decorated tank. As for Duck Team, the shot of them entering the tank visually reminds us that they are athletes, and their failed attack on Rukuriri's tank shows that while they've got some good ideas, they don't understand their capabilities quite yet. And of course, we can't forget Momo's overstressing about everything and missing every shot she takes. In a lot of shows action scenes, the stuff we would see side characters doing would be pretty inconsequential. But here, they help flesh out the characters a bit, as they are now, 
while showing where they will be going. These little moments manage to communicate a lot, while not detracting from the action or slowing things down. Once again, Girls and Panzer makes optimal use of every moment of screen time. A third major way in which this first battle is used to show us important story and character aspects is in its showcase of Miho's skill. By this point, we've learned a bit about her background, her family, and her that she's a skilled tank commander. But it's something else entirely to see her in action, as much for the characters around her as it is for the audience. Narratively, it's a statement that as raw and untrained as Orai is, they have a chance, even against such a better team. This doesn't need to be pointed out by anyone. Seeing it says enough. From a further story perspective, Miho's performance here serves both to inspire her team and herself to also believe that they have a chance in the tournament and it earns her Darjeeling's respect. Especially considering how poorly we've just seen Orai perform, this battle also had to show us that there is something that they have which could help turn them into a success. Miho is that person. While we'd already had that short practice battle, this scene is our true introduction to a proper Senshiro match. Considering how central the sport is itself to the show, this is an important moment, and it also manages to get across to us how things work with minimal exposition. There is no scene where everyone's sitting in a room while Miho or someone explains the rules, because why create a new scene and slow things down when you can do it as you go? Delivering expositional information in small chunks and during scenes that also serve another purpose is really the best way to go about giving the audience needed info. It feels natural, doesn't slow the pace, and of course gets the point across. Next time, we'll take a closer look at the technical and tactical aspects of the battle as Girls on Panzer's production team demonstrates that they know how to compose a great action scene and have a good understanding of tank combat. So I'll be ready to roll into that next time. If you enjoyed this video and like to support me and what I do here, check out the links in my books and light novels below in the description. A link to my Patreon is down there as well. I've started sharing awesome updates, including completed pages, from upcoming manga Amaranth Angels on there, and there are other rewards too. As I mentioned at the start of the video, you could also start reading the prologue for free over on Webtoons. Additionally, I've got some cool merch over on TeePublic. And of course, if you have any thoughts on this video, or does anything Girls on Panzer related you'd like me to talk about, definitely share them below in the comments. I love to hear them, and I do my best to read and eventually respond to all the comments. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. I'll also be doing another Dream Tank match stream this Saturday at about 2pm EST, so be there for that. That's all for now, so until next time.